What's up, y'all, man? I'm C Styles, man. What's going on? It's your boy Mo. And welcome to Brooklyn Boys Radio. All day. So what are we talking about today, man? Man, we talking about it all. Like we hitting all types of topics, everything from current events to uh pop culture to relationships to Man, whatever's going on in your home, well, in your life. Well, before we even get to that, I, I want to just tell the people why we even thought to do this. And, you know, even though there's a lot of podcasts and radio stuff out there. This ain't a podcast. Oh, this ain't a podcast. Nah, All right, cool. Whatever nah. this is, right? We just decided to do this and come together to do it because I think for a couple of, uh, about the last year or two, a lot of people have been asking me to be a part of their podcast, and I think the same with you, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so... And we've been talking about it back and forth. And me and him be on the phone talking for hours just about anything and everything. We just like, yo, let's just put it in front of the people. Yeah, I mean, I also think like a lot of times we have conversations and we just have a unique perspective, you know what I mean, on things that are going on. And um, we just felt that this, it was something that we need to share with the world. And a lot of times people be like, yo, look, you need a platform just to really speak because we think that y'all opinions, you know, is something that the world could benefit from. So... And we from Brooklyn, man, so we're going to spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. All day. And we you come know? from a different cloth. And we and look, bringing and that cloth out there. And I'm sick today. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I test for COVID. I don't know how to give it no more. I don't know what it is. I might have it. I might not. It says I was negative. He ain't got COVID. He got an <laughs> STD. Oh, shit. Monkey pox out there. <laughs> I used to be scared of monkey pox real shit, though. Oh, man. Until I found out you could get rid of it. I didn't think you could get rid of monkey pox for a minute. I thought it's like something you get. But it's like a... You know, grown up chicken pox, so I ain't too afraid no more. Man, monkey pox is like the boogeyman, imaginary. Yeah, okay, cool. Just don't come, don't come around here with the imaginary shit. That's all I'm saying. But now we're gonna talk about some Brooklyn shit. We're gonna bring it straight to Brooklyn. Um, we're gonna talk about somebody that we uh kind of know. We worked with uh, a yeah, couple of times yeah, before. Yeah, you know, yeah. Bishop Lamar Whitehead, man, and just give our two cents on the bishop. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that was crazy, man. That was, I mean, it's so crazy because. You can look at that situation from so many different angles. It's like, damn, nothing sacred no more. Dudes running up in the church, backing yeah, the bishop so down. But then at the same time, you know how the jungle is. You know what I mean? You can't run through the jungle with a stake tied around your neck. Same way you can't run through the hood and the Rolls Royce yeah. and these jewels and this and that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Tempting but the you people. You have the prerogative to go anywhere you want, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do what you want. And I don't, you know, a lot of people were saying, speculating that, you know, it could have been set up he could have set himself up and I, I pray that the boy wouldn't set himself up inside of a church you know what i'm saying so but that's also funny to me right that it that somebody would go into church i don't i you know i seen a, i know a lot of robbers <laughs> i've been a part of some things in my day nobody never thought to go into church i mean listen we, we 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 live in a different time first and foremost and i think um that's another thing with this whole brooklyn boys thing it's like same thing oh same thing with like money and violence, the slogan, welcome to the old Brooklyn. It's like re revisiting these old values, right? We live in a day and time where there are no rules. There are no principles, you know what I'm saying? These youngins out here, they have no guidance. And because of that, there's no parameters, no borders on the things that they do. Um, I get what you're saying as far as certain things should be off limits, but me being a dude that grew up out here in Brooklyn in these streets, I also know that you got to move a certain way. You know what I mean? Because you got to protect yourself, especially if you, it's your congregation, it's your family. Like, you got to move in a way to protect them as well. You know, that's true, too. Like I said, I hope he wouldn't set himself up Bruh. or have a gun put in his uh, kid face or his Bruh. wife face. That's kind of that's kind of crazy, you know? Um, I don't like the way he really handling it outside after the whole event, you know what I'm saying? Um, to be beefing back and forth with D.L. Hughley, um, you know, you're a man of the cloth. You should, you know, you should exercise and kind of move the way you need to move, the right way. Even though he's a man at the end of the day, too, because we all can bear but so much. But at the same time, you're in front of the masses, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I feel like kind of he getting caught into the social media thing, right? His numbers went skyrocketing. I don't know if everybody noticed that. Mm -hmm. And I think he, I don't know, to me, it's like for the numbers now, like, don't get caught up in the sauce, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I totally agree, but at the same time, like, just, just to play devil's advocate, right? I don't know whether it really happened, whether it was set up or whatever, but let's say it really happened, right? Let's say some dudes really schemed on him, ran up in there, put a gun to his wife, right next to his child, stripped her, took the engagement ring, took his jewelry, and now I'm on social media and I'm seeing people make fun of that. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Or, or, or I, I, I'm, 
I'd be offended that people, if, if I didn't do that, I'd be offended that people would, you think that <coughs> I would set that up with my family in the church? You understand where yeah, I'm coming from? Yeah, but day two and day three, though. Not, not two weeks later. I get it. <laughs> I, I get it. And, and I do believe that he's getting caught up in the social media yeah, storm. But what I'm saying is, as a man, his reaction to be offended, his reaction to, 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 to basically get emotional and throw wisdom to the side, I can understand to a degree yeah, but like I said, why to, I can go there, but you know, the, his, his, the his best, better sense, his better judgment and his better sense is supposed to step in, like once you get emotional. I mean, that's why we mature as men. We can't let emotion take control. Our intelligence is supposed to step in and be like, yo, whoa, this ain't for our benefit. You know what I'm saying? This is going to hurt us more than help us. But at the same time, I mean, it's not how I would go about things. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be all over social media, blah, nah, blah, blah, blah warring with it, people. It, 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 the thing I will say, I don't mean to cut you right. The thing I will say is the best thing for anything when you, when you, when you have time, time kind of make you calm down and time make you think about things differently. It's been two weeks. Now you on social media threatening, threatening, um, you know, want to fight for a million dollars. He got the jail pick out. You know what I'm saying? He from the streets. Look, one thing I will give him though, I don't have a problem with the flashy jewelry, the clothing and all that. Right. Cause I'm a semi-church boy, church boy, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of these pastors have a lavish, house, lavish houses, cars, and all that, right? So that's nothing new to me, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen it all. But what I will say is, he's definitely in the street. Like, I've seen him give away toys, feed the homeless. Yeah. And a lot of these preachers be behind the pulpit a lot of times. And they don't be outside in the street or in the community. Accessible. Like on some, on some, like what Jesus would do. Jesus didn't have no church. Jesus was outside in the street. So I do credit him for that. But the antics afterwards, you got to chill. He put in the jail pickup. Like for what? Like, but, 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 but I <laughs> don't make no sense, man. Nah, I, I agree. But I also think that the bishop was was basically trying to cater to a certain demographic. You know, we we've dealt we've dealt with Bishop Lowell Definitely. Whitehead. Like, you know, he's not a bad dude. And at the end of the day, like for, for a while, he was marketing himself as the bishop of the streets. Hip hop, yeah. you, you understand hip hop music. So at the end of the day, like his whole mission was to be relatable. You understand to his congregation, because like he always says, he can reach those that these other ministers can't reach because he speaks their language. So I think, I think that exposing that he's been in jail, I think that, that it's, it's pretty much trying to, to, to get him to show his flock that yo, He's relatable. You know, I've, I, I, I understand y'all. I understand the life that y'all live. You know what I mean? And y'all can come but to this church think, and y'all will be accepted. You don't think it's the opportunity. This is the perfect opportunity that your social media numbers went up and it's perfect opportunity yeah. to get these kids to come to you now. You don't got to overshow that. You don't got to overplay your hand. Like you ever overplayed your hand? Like yeah. you just overplaying the hand. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, I, I seen him <clears throat> preach and the preaching thing is cool. But I think his word could even be 10 times better. You know what I'm saying? He, I'm, like I said, I'm a church boy. Mm -hmm. And I think he has the opportunity to step his, his game up in the, preaching, in, the, in the preaching aspect and bring more kids to him instead of showing them, like, yo, go to the street type thing, go fight at somebody and all that. You could do it a different way. That's just my opinion. But like I said, man, we worked with him before. And, you know, I, I, I just hope that didn't happen to his family. Um, I hope he didn't set his family up or nothing like that because that's what people keep coming back and saying. And I hope that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, he's in the streets more than a lot of people are in the streets as far as just dealing with the community on a weekly, monthly, daily basis. I've seen him out there. I've seen him run to the rapper's rescue. So I got to give credit where credit is due. But you know, you know what's crazy? Like sometimes when I sit back and I watch, I have to remind myself that and, and you tell me this a lot of times, that we're kind of like out of step, right? We're kind of like dinosaurs to a degree. Like this social media thing is the new way that everybody deals with things. And I don't, I don't personally agree with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I always say, give it to God, not social media. You get what I mean? 100%. Um, I don't get the whole, you know, you, 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 you get into a disagreement with someone and instead of reaching out to them and addressing it, what you do is you, Go address it to social media, like yeah, social media I know, like the fakest platform yeah, type like, of thing I've been seeing you, forever, man. And I, and I think I think that that's really just you know a ploy for attention. You get what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like although 
I haven't really transitioned. I haven't really made that that switch to this mm-hmm. whole social media attention because I could care less about all of that. You know what I mean? Um, I do understand that that's becoming a new way of the world. You know, like, bruh, we are about to be extinct. The cloth that we're cut, yo, yo, we cut, yo, and, and, day. yo, and I, wait, but I thought about, I thought about that a couple of weeks ago, like, yo, bro, in another 30 to 40 years, our entire generation, the entire cloth we've been cut from is going to be extinct. It's, it's, it's going, going be to different. be gone, bro. Not a trace of us left on this earth. Yo, but you know, I, just to speak on that real quick, it's just so bugged out to me. You know, we went to something a couple of weeks ago, I ain't gonna say what it was, but we had went to something and chilled out. And, I, you know, we was sitting there just <laughs> laughing at everybody because it was like the weirdos became cool. I ain't never seen that before. Like, it's bogged out. It's like it was a group of real people. Whether and when I say real, I mean you could have been in the streets, you could have been a lawyer, you could have been a school kid, but just real people. Like all the non cool kids are now cool and they stuck together. But you know, the real kids, they was always on their own shit. Like, yo, we gonna do I'm doing my own thing. I don't need son over there. And that division between realness got all the real niggas X'd out. Yeah. It got us all X'd out. And then the weirdos stuck together took social media and then took it off and now they all popping. So when you say extinct, I just think all the, I just think all the weirdos are going to be, you know, they're going to rule this whole shit in a minute. I and mean, so we're going to be God. No, I mean, listen, with each day that passes, you know what I mean, whether it's dudes getting killed, whether it's dudes getting locked up, in all honesty, our type of individual, bruh, is, is dying out. You understand, like, we live by a certain set of principles, we move by a certain set of codes that we won't do certain things, you understand? And, and it has nothing to do with, with whether it, bro, like me, for instance, whether it'll gain me millions. There's certain things I just won't we'll do. do. I just now, won't do. I agree do. with that. Like, I saw something last <clears throat> week, not last week, maybe a couple weeks ago, a friend of my son, he got into an incident. It was crazy. Two, I know two kids, the same thing happened, but the police said the same exact thing. I said, oh, yo, don't worry about it. We'll catch them on TikTok and um, Snapchat. And I said, Snick- you know, TikTok and Snapchat, like, what do you mean? But lo and behold, a week or two later, a video surfaced. And the video surfaced. One, it was the craziest video because they doing something to the young man. And they get in the car. And then they videotape the license plates of the car. No! And I'm like, yo, how, how stupid could you be? Like, you, you videotape your whole escape route. Then another kid... He got caught in the store. I don't know if people understand the cameras. The cameras, they, you, can, you can travel a mile with the cameras. You know what I'm saying? Dude put on the mask. They had it from putting on the mask outside the building all the way till the incident. So they saw him putting on the mask in the building, got his face, and then had the merchandise on him when they caught up to him. Genius, so it's just crazy genius, that these kids genius. are not even thinking four or five steps ahead, and they keep getting caught with the same type of thing. Yeah, I mean, listen, man. This whole... This whole concept of doing crimes and putting it on video, like I can't even grasp it because, you know, we're from a time where we didn't even like to take pictures. Leave the movies in the movies, dog. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, this is reality. I mean, there's consequences to all actions. And, you know, I never understood it because um, if something's illegal, it needs to be concealed, right? So guns are illegal in New York, and that's why you don't walk with a gun in your hand. <laughs> you keep it. In your waist, you keep your shirt, you keep it tucked because no one can see it. So I don't understand how people commit crimes and they no longer conceal that anymore. Like it's all out in the open. Like it's it's something to be proud of. I mean, first of all, like, and I think that's the difference. You know, we did what we did out of lack of resources and lack of opportunities. You understand? Truth be told, like all the things I did, man, if I had more opportunities, and I'm not saying I couldn't have went and got a job and this and that, but if I had opportunities that would have paid me as well as, you know, the wrong things that I would do, I was doing, I wouldn't have done them, mm. you know? But I think these days it's more about saying I'm a drug dealer. It's about more about saying, yo, I'm a robber, I'm this, I'm that. Cause you know, you see dudes get on social media and they pretty much put out this whole resume, right? But this whole resume will get you indicted. <laughs> 155%. You know, I seen the feds say most of they uh, they saw most of their crime through Instagram. <laughs> That's the, it's crazy. They telling you, they giving you the cheat code that they got, and you still giving them the information for free. Like it don't even make no sense. But look, man, I don't even want to talk about that. You know, depress me. 
I want to talk about this bad teacher I saw today on Instagram. Man. She was trying to shit. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. And they were saying that, you know, parents trying to get her fired in the school because her body too right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if she got her body done up or not, but she was fine to the motherfucker. I've been telling you that yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she no. fine. And I don't know how you gonna get a fire. Like, I thought we ain't body shaming no more. What happened? Like, you body shaming again? Like, oh, no. Nah, <laughs> see, but that's the thing. The body shaming is only when it's convenient. Your oh, okay. You know, you're body shaming if you call someone obese, but you're not body shaming. I had a lot of teachers with bad breath, B. Why didn't <laughs> fire them niggas? I had this one cheese, his underarm just stink, man. He always used to reach over and try to show you some of your paper. Like, why ain't fire that nigga? Man, listen. Yeah, they can't fire shorty, bitch. She bad them motherfuckers. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm going to school to pick up my kid every day now. Every I, single day I'm going to pick him up. But that's the problem. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I think I think the fathers want to go pick up the kid every that's goddamn it. day. And the mother's like, wait a minute. Before the kid joined this class, you only went and picked the kid up twice the whole entire yeah, listen, year. Man, now you want to pick him I'm up paying every attention day. To, listen, I'm paying attention. I wouldn't even cut the class. You know how many times I cut my Spanish class? How many cut time? I, I, if my teacher looked like that, I would always be in full attendance. <laughs> be like, are you crazy? She was bad. Yo, she bad though. Shorty, wherever you at, my Instagram is cstyles911. <laughs> Holla at me, please. Because I'm here. I need to be taught how to draw. I want to draw something. I want to be a artist. <laughs> Put his ass on time out. Hello. Do you find it hard to get up in the morning? Does your mood always seem to be down? Do you lack confidence? Is it difficult for you to enjoy yourself even at the strip club? If you answered yes to most of these questions, there's a very good chance you may be broke. The good news is, although many may think that being broke is a permanent issue, it's treatable. This is Munch. Munch came to us broke as hell. Look at him now. Ballin', baby. Don't touch me, nigga. Here at the Get Money Treatment Center, we will teach you many ways to treat this horrible sickness that's been affecting people forever. Our caring staff and treatment professionals will help you make the steps to recover from being broke. Before you know it, you'll be popping bottles and making it rain. Although it may feel like it, life is not over. Make the call to the Get Money Treatment Center and start getting help today. Because of the Get Money Treatment Center, being broke is no longer a life sentence. It's now a choice. Enrollment in the program automatically waives your right to cooperate with law enforcement. Side effects of getting money is the possibility of an abundance of haters, an increase in vagina for men, and a loss of friends. So, the latest thing now, what's up with Diddy talking my R&B is dead, man? Like, that's, that's a whole movement going on. I don't know, you know me, I'm going singing on. to these motherfuckers. Don't let me start singing. Listen. Love, I'm taking now my hand, baby. Put him on stage and he gonna freeze. <laughs> I'm, I've seen it. <laughs> yo, you still talking about that? Yeah, I'm still yo, talking about that. Yo, these that. niggas tried to take me. I put out the song one time. And I told him. He told me, get on stage. Everybody, everybody was asking for the song. <laughs> everybody like, yo, this song hard, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, Styles, let's push this. Man, throw that dude on stage. Man, listen, legs locked. He was like yeah, Eminem. I, he was like Eminem at 8 Mile, I growing mean, up. Yeah, I was, yeah. Me. But they let me come back. Me, like, you know what I'm saying? But RB ain't dead, though. Let's go back. Don't talk about it. Let's talk about RBB. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I don't think that... I think it's like alternative. I don't know if to call it alternative. I don't know what to call it, R&B. But you know, if you listen to like SZA, Sir, uh, uh, Brett Fires, um, there's some dope R&B dudes out there. Be like, to me, I think I just don't think people are looking at it, are looking at those songs. If you're looking at her, Daniel Caesar, there's some really dope R&B shit out there. But I kind of get what they saying, what Diddy saying, I guess because the hip hop got so much singing in it, maybe, mm. and you kind of confuse that. Maybe it's the radio stations. They play, they don't play those artists that I'm talking about. They play more the future, the Drake's, the singing rap nigga, instead of playing the R&B people. They don't play as much R&B, so I think... That could probably be what the problem is. I mean, but I, is it really a problem? I mean, or is it just the natural evolution of music? You know what I mean? Because if you look at the music from the 90s and the music now, it's totally different. You know, at the point they were saying hip hop is dead. You get where I'm coming from? If you look at rock, rock has evolved. If you look at country, country's evolved. 
If you look at any look, genre man, I, music. Listen, <clears throat> R. Kelly shouldn't have pissed on little little girls. Warren B would have been fine. If <laughs> R. Kelly had just kept his penis till an adult, we'd be fine right now. Kelly, R- you'd have kept R and B alive, <laughs> yeah, man. And it's your fault, nigga. Oh man. It's your fault. I don't oh, agree so with you that ain't shit. just pissed on a little girl, you pissed on the entire R and B industry, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's his fault, man. Because if he was here, if he was here, R and B be fine. And I think it's Kelly's fault. So this blame R. Kelly for R&B being dead. That's you know, that's, bl- that's the first time I ever heard you blame R. Kelly for anything. Nah, listen, man, I don't agree with, don't agree <laughs> yeah. with the shit that the nigga did. He's a, this nigga, I don't know. You, all the women want you, you want kids. I, I, I don't get it. But listen, he killed R&B. I still listen to R. Kelly, though. I, I yeah, yeah, I mean, listen. Listen. People still listening to Elvis Presley. He was married to a 16-year-old. I don't understand why they people. They listen to Johnny Cash. Yeah, I don't understand why our people do that, though. Like, I hear a lot of these people talk, cancel R. Kelly, cancel. Yo, you know how many people you gotta cancel? You know how many songs he wrote for other motherfuckers? Like, you know how many people you should be canceling that did time? To, they not canceling. What's your home? What's the homeboy? They the, the white you, boy. You that, said my homeboy. The white boy. You, you know what I'm talking about? The white boy that uh, that just went to jail for messing with all the women and stuff. Who? What's, what's his name? The white boy. The the the, the, uh, the executive. Harvey Weinstein. Is Weinstein? No. Weinstein. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, we canceling all his movies. No hell, but no, we, we cancel not. everything that we do. Cosby, you Cosby, canceled. they did the same Ca- thing to Cosby. But we 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 do all everything that has to do with us. We the first people to cancel ourselves or cancel pieces of our culture. You know what I'm saying? You, if you want to start canceling shit, start canceling. You know, all the people that had slaves and took inventions. Cancel the light bulb. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, I, you, I don't understand. But it. you, like, but, but, you me out. but you know what's so crazy is, like on. Just a little to deflect a little, but to still stay on the subject. That's something I never understood, right? So if the government finds out that your corporation or whatever was started from drug money, they're going to basically come and seize everything, shut you down, blah, 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 because it was made off of illegal bread. You know what I mean? But all of these big-ass corporations, Fortune 500 companies, blue-chip companies that were started off of slavery, they ain't coming to get that. They ain't coming to get that. Like it, it, it just, it just doesn't to, make sense. They ain't coming to get that fortune. And my problem is that we always fall into the Jedi mind trick where we cancel. I, I'm not telling you R. Kelly is <laughs> supposed to be condoned or po- not supposed to be canceled. What I'm saying is we always seem to cancel ourselves. We can cancel R. Kelly and everything he did, but he'll keep the music going. You know what I'm saying? And that's what other races do. They don't stop whatever's happening. You don't see uh, the DuPonts or the 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 the... the any one of them big uh, rock childs cancel all the things that these people done in this world that we cancel anything that they do. Well, but I, I think what the problem is is people. And we do it to ourselves all the time. People, but but that's because people, our people are not able to separate the artist from the being, right? From the person, they don't understand that the artist and the person are two totally different people. I mean, because this is a conversation that. I used to have with my daughters all the time, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because I always thought that the idolization or the infatuation with celebrities for young girls, I always thought that was dangerous, you know what I mean? I and that's because, you. you know, you be around the music industry and you see what happens to groupies. You get where I'm coming from? And I always used to tell them, like, yo, I need you to understand that what you connect to is the music, not the artist. You yeah, know what I mean? It's the music that you relate to. I, well, go, go back to, I don't mean to cut you, but you even go back to the bishop real quick, and I tell people that all the time, I should have said that. A lot of people get caught up in the in the preacher when they should only be caught up in the word, right? You're only supposed to be caught up in the word of God. Man is men gonna be men, they're always gonna fail you in anything that they do. The Bible said we all we all we none of us are exempt from sin. We all have we all gonna sin, we all fall short of the glory. So a lot of times we get caught up in, like you said, the idolization of the man. Of the being. Yeah. And that's, it's worship that's, and idols. It's, yeah, worship, it's, it's basically worship and idols. But I think that that's what's going on. So they're not able to separate the fact that Look, R. Kelly can go in the studio and make a beautiful song about upliftment, inspiration, God, and then he can step out of there and go do whatever as Robert Kelly. You get where I'm coming from? And one has nothing to do with the other. Like, his contribution as an artist to us and to our culture, he's paying his consequences. He's in jail. You know what I mean? And, And one thing people need to understand, too, is to pay once for your wrong is justice. To pay multiple times over and over and over and to keep paying for it is injustice even though i think he need to be put away but the way they got him was crazy to me i just thought it was you know i think what they got him like on a, what is it uh, not racketeering what they got what's the charge they got him on conspiracy it, no it is it is racketeering, racketeering but but 
Like and it's crazy the charges that they got. I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think it's crazy because at the end of the day, let me tell you something. How does that break territory? If you know, look, first of all, we're black in America. We we seen it happen to OJ. They they locked OJ up because they wanted OJ basically for going back, back to get memori- memorabilia that, that was they, his, that right? They stole from him. But this is what I'm saying. They've been after R. Kelly for 25, 30 uh, yeah, years. That's why he's stupid. So at what point do you go, yo? I know I'm hot. I'm going to have to fall back. back and chill out. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. So if you Listen continue me. to do the same things, bro, then you're bringing this upon yourself. I'm saying call for it. Yeah. This is all I'm saying. Look, I, I wasn't there in those rooms. I don't know whether the man did it or whether he didn't do it. But all I know is you knew you was hot, bro, and you continued to basically keep. Because I'll tell you this. If I was R. Kelly, after they tried to charge me the first time, you couldn't get a, a, you couldn't get a teenager 10 miles About near me. me. <laughs> Listen, man. Forevermore is still gonna be like one of my favorite songs. I'll probably get married to that song if I ever get married. So <laughs> that's my Just don't get married to a teenager, bro. <laughs> Cause you talking about you, you go, you. <coughs> Here we go. <laughs> we just said separate the art from the artist, and you, you talk about yo. Know, anyway, what, anyway, what else you got to say, man? What, like, what um, else we going to? What else we going to? What was interesting this past week that this happened? What's up with that 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 virtual rapper, the Capitol Records, had signed? I don't know, but I know it's a Chinese dude and a white boy that's making that's, that made him, and it, it, that that shit is crazy. I saw the dude get beat up by police. I saw the dude look like he was robbing something. He had guns. He was crying. Like I don't know, man. That's what they really think about us, then, because that's cra- it's crazy what they think about us, how they depict us. The rapper, like, I don't, I don't know about that version. But you know what's so crazy? What's so crazy is Capitol Records dropped them, and then they issued a statement apologizing, right? But, <laughs> oh, but, he got dropped already? Yeah, he got dropped. They dropped him. <laughs> they dropped him because of the backlash. But, but it's so crazy because, but y'all didn't hear them saying the N-word all day long on these songs? You know, before the backlash came, y'all knew what was going, going on. on yeah. You know what I mean? So the truth is... But, but look, man, that's just... It just shows you what they think about us, right? It shows you what, how they feel about you, what, what they see you as. And if nobody's looking at that and paying attention to that and going, wait a minute, this is, how, this is their lens, this is their view of us, how they see us all the time. This was a Chinese dude, if I'm not mistaken, Asian, I should say, because I don't know if he's Chinese or Japanese, because you got to be correct, you know what I mean? Um, but <laughs> he, he, he ain't trying to get us shut down I mean, before yeah, we yeah, get shut down. Yeah. up. An yeah. uh, Asian dude and a white dude that made it was like, yo, crazy, I'm sitting here like, but that's how they view you, that's how they depict us. So it's just, if, we, if that's not an eye-opener for you, what else is going to be an eye-opener for you? I mean, listen, if your eyes ain't open by now, We've been living in this country for God knows how long, and I mean, and it's right in front of your face, everything that's going on. Um, I always say this, man, like even with the whole COVID thing, right? And I always was saying, it's not that I don't trust the vaccine, it's just that I don't trust the government. I mean, and no, I, I, that's, I, I, that's the honest I, I, to God I, truth, because if I walk into a bank and I want a loan, what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at my credit history, right? Which is they're gonna look at my past, and if I, Walking to... You're about to get us shut off because you're going to be talk, saying some crazy stuff. No, nah, I'm not saying ahead. nothing crazy. I'm just saying if I walk into a company and I'm looking for a job, they're going to mm-hmm. look at my resume because that's my employment history. Because by looking at my past, they can predict what I would do in the future. Should, so all you have to do credit. is literally look at the history of America. Look at the history of this government. You understand what I'm saying? And I mean, we sit here, you know, still with our legs crossed, singing Kumbaya, hoping that things get better, most definite. And I'm not saying that there haven't been, I'm not even gonna say improvements, changes. You understand what I'm saying? Because the truth is, if you listen to the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech, it's still relevant to today. Um, All you have to do is look at the history Mm. of America to really say like what they would do and, and, that's why when, when I hear people say that they don't trust the government and people basically call it conspiracy theory, I'm like, man, listen, like y'all got convenient amnesia. Seriously. <laughs> listen, man, I, I'm not going to speak on that, man, because we're going to be here for a whole hour with me talking about that. But yeah, I don't trust none of that. But to go back to the virtual rapper, dude, what I want to say is um, just talking about music and keeping the music, yo, I've been watching Flex um, for the last couple of weeks, just been, uh, you know, uh, 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 getting at all the New York rappers to kind of um, challenge them to put out new records every week. So 
I love that for the New York scene. Um, I love some of the records I'm hearing. Some of these guys are doing the records in like six days. I've seen it with Jewels. I've seen it with Busta. I've seen it with um, with a uh, 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 um, who else? I've seen it with Jada Kiss. I've seen it with a couple of New York rappers. So I think that's dope. Nicki Minaj. I've seen it with. I so, think he challenged Conway the Machine too from um Griselda. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, he had a big situation with him, um, going back and forth. So I just <clears> love <throat> to see that. I hope this Flex would do it even more of that with some new artists, um, that we get new artists. But I think it start with the old artists to kind of jump start it. And I hope that we could go into some new, some new artists too, as, as well too. I seen little TJ, um, putting out a record, um, shout out to him with this whole situation to come back from seven shots to, you know, basically record a new record. And I, I seen a little clip of a video. I didn't see the whole video of it, but I think that was really dope. Um, you know, to see him back upon his feet. You know, it was an unfortunate situation. Even that situation was stupid, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's an unfortunate situation. But I'm glad to see that New York artists are, you know, adhering the call. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, hopefully we get some new dope music and we put New York back in the forefront of hip-hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, man, everybody needs motivation and inspiration. I mean, some of these artists have been going at it for 20, 30 years, you know, and... You got dudes like Jay, you got dudes like Fab, you got dudes like Kiss who tend to, you know, always keep themselves motivated, inspired, and always, you know, putting out that new stuff and transforming themselves and reinventing or whatever. But um, I definitely do like what Flex is doing. Yeah, I like what he's doing. Stop cutting off them damn records, though. Stop all that, yo, this is... Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, but you can't. I don't want to hear none of that. Bro, you cannot say... I don't want to... You can't say Flex. That you can't shit say makes flex me so angry, and man. That's like saying flex and not saying bombs in the same no, sentence. That's, flex, yeah, is to, bo- flex is going to do what bomb, flex is going to do. You don't got to drop it 50 times. Flex is going to do like, what flex is going to do. No, my and, I'm not say, and I'm not saying that I'm crazy about that. I got to go to YouTube. Because it'd be, it be, it be annoying. Like, I, that shit is annoying me. It, it do Every be annoying. Minutes, Yo, New York City. But that's his thing. But that's his thing. That's his thing. We know it's his thing. You don't got to do it Listen, man. Got it got him where he's at. So yeah, he gonna continue to nah, do it. Man, you know what I mean? Flex, drop your bombs. Nah, 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 nah. You know what nah, I mean? Nah, you, nah, you've been, anno- shit, you've been annoying me for over 20 years with that, but hey, I'm used to it. <laughs> 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 I, I can't take it, man. I gotta go to YouTube to hear the song in its entirety. After, I, I, I just hear the first three seconds, I turn the radio off, man. Yo, ain't that crazy how much things have changed? Like, you listen to music more on your computer and your phone. Then you uh, do your time. radio now, man. That's like, all I work out to is my phone. Like, I put my phone on my Tidal app, and I go hardcore on Tidal and just listen to the song. I wish they had, like, a mix. Like, you could, you know how you blend the records into the next record? I wish you could do that on one of the apps. Well, I shouldn't say that because the DJ spike won't have no job. But, um, yeah, I wish I could just kind of blend my joints and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, nah, I, I definitely I definitely be listening to that. And just trans- talking about transforming yourself from, you know, what, what Flex was doing, but even 50, I've been watching the Power Joint, and you know, I know everybody know we do money and violence. This is the creator extraordinaire, you know what I'm saying? And we get to the history about us and all that stuff too at another time. But um, yeah, we gonna, I, we gonna address the whole money and violence thing at some at point. Some point yeah, so. definitely. Um, you know, and um, but I I I like the Canaan Joint though. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely I love the actress, the mom in that joint. I don't mm-hmm. know her name, but she fire. You know what I'm saying? And Joey, Joey Badass, Badass killing oh my that. He God, killing that. that. Yo, he disembodied the whole 80s. Essence of an 80s dude. Yeah. Like, he, he took me, yo, he, he took me, me back. He took me back yeah. every time I watch him, man. I remember I used to be, in the 80s, I used to just sit on the corner, man, and, and you know, when the dudes come around with their leather bomber or the eight-ball jacket mm-hmm. or, and driving the fly car, that's my car. You Two-tone know what I'm jeans. Yeah, so, you know, he embodied that whole thing, man. So, big up to uh, 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 Joey Badass, man, and, I, and I'm just loving the... Uh, I'm, I'm Tina Miller. Tina Miller? Okay. But Bettina. Bettina Miller. All right, cool. That's her name. Shout out to Bettina Miller. She killed that. Uh, that Shout moment. out to Monty for knowing how to use Google. Yeah, Monty. That's <laughs> Monty, Monty the extraordinaire over there. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I love the Canaan series, man. Between that and BMF, I, I don't know. I like, I like what 50's kind of doing with some of the shows. I just wish. Was it Force your favorite? Force the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, but um, um, I, I, I don't I wanna, know why you ain't you you you, you talked about um raising cane. <laughs> you talked uh, about BMF. Okay. So well, what you think of force? Force is uh, it was forced. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it was forced. 
Um, I personally think it was trash. It was forced. Though. I personally think it was trash. I, I mean, me personally, you know, and I like, and, and it's so crazy because because I like Joseph Joseph Sakura, and I was rooting for him. You know what I mean? Because I like the Tommy character in the first Power, but man, that fourth show was like. I don't know why they killed Ghost though. That's why I want to know because. I, I need ghosts. I think, like, I yeah, miss ghosts. I, like, think, I, but miss... I think Omari was ready. He, he was ready to move on. Yeah, that's... that's what it was. Like, I, you see, he's trying to deflect me from saying that Force is trash. Oh, but no, I'm not trying yeah. to deflect you. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that show was... <laughs> so what about Power? <laughs> no, I like... I, bro, I like... No, that show was trash, too. I like um, Tariq, man. I like BMF. It's just impossible. I like Raising Cane. Yeah, but this, but this is what, but this is what I'm saying. Like, it, but I want to say this. I didn't mean to cut your wisdom. My bad. But we got to have some other shows that depict us in some other kind of way. I know we, uh, we, we, we highlight go. the crime shit. <laughs> the city, Because most of us come from that, right? Like, a lot of us come from that type of environment. I don't care if you're from Brooklyn, the West Coast. We come from that, so we kind of gravitate gravitate to that. But it's a lot of sides to us, man. It's a lot of, I agree. It's a lot of depth to us. And, you know, I think black love is some of the, the deepest love that you ever going to witness. And, you know, it's not only deep, but it's also funny and crazy at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Like, bogged out crazy, you know, especially probably this black love that we're dealing with now, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, man. You look, you saw homegirl on the internet this weekend, she was saying, um, if, if, if you want a clean woman, if you want a girl with no uh, bumps on her face, her eyebrows, her nails done. Then, then you got to pick a bill. You got to pick a, you heard that shit? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that, that I, was kind of crazy. I, I, I don't, I don't, I really don't understand my the logic. clean. My mom's got her eyebrows done. You know, my daughter get, I don't understand that. Like, if I wash my ass, somebody gonna pay me? No, but it's not even. <laughs> somebody gonna pay a bill but for it's, me? But it's not even I just. I just wanna know what's going on. I mean, on. my thing is just. She was bad, though. Yeah, but what do I get out of this? I don't know what I but, make but, but, but what do I, what do I really get out of this? I don't, I don't know, Coochie. I don't know. Look, what, so, I mean, but that, that's the question. my friends, but pussy and dick to me always been an equal exchange, so I don't. You know and I don't. I mean? And I don't. And you know what? Know. And I don't even think it's just about it being an even exchange. It's just about. And maybe it's because you know, maybe it's because of my my level of maturity or how old I've grown. Like at my age, bro, it is not that serious. You understand? Nah, definitely not. It, and it's, and it's definitely not. And you know, um, I think any man who doesn't have to do all of that and and listen and don't get me wrong i think a man should always be a man and a man should provide for his woman i think i think the problem with what's what's going on these days is people kind of date backwards you understand because dudes are jump through hoops and do everything just to get in wait 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 let me finish just to get into a woman's pants right but then the crazy thing is once she becomes his woman then they do less right they do the most at the beginning i got i got a statement for that one first i want to ask you one thing so do we say <laughs> are we saying that um, is niggas out here paying for loyalty from a woman? <laughs> like, are you paying? Because that's basically what she said. Because she was like, yeah. "Yo, you can have me, and you know, as you please, when you want to." So, are we? Is that something that you gotta pay for now? Like, I, I, I'm kind of confused. We probably need a girl to the show, so we're gonna be looking for girls. But because I would love to hear a woman's opinion. Definitely. But, I mean, loyalty can't be paid for. That's, that's number and, one. And, and, and th- that's the point. I'm because trying to what, get to. what you're basically doing is you're, you're financing the situation, and just like a car, when you can't make the payments Payment. no more, she's gonna get repo. You gonna get repo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you gonna wake I, up and you gonna look where my where my chick? Just like you gonna say where my car? Cause the car's gone. And that's why I want to know. Cause if we paying for we financing this thing, and I, and I always tell people, this is just, you know, just me. I tell people all the time, I don't think that you really know a person, because you said some, a guy do something to get the girl, and then, you know, they, they kind of don't do it anymore. And I tell people all the time, you really don't know people until you, after you have sex with them, um, until you have the first big argument with them, until you live with them. Um, those are three ways that you really got to get to know some, to me. Because a girl, before you have sex with her, sometimes she'd be like standoffish, and don't mess with you or the guy, he just be all in you, calling you every single day, and then you give him some buns and he out. Or the girl, you the girl you find she finally sleep with you, and now she feeling you and she calling you every day. You know, um, when you live with somebody or be in somebody's space a lot, you find out like, you know, I don't she nasty, I don't wanna live with her. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Or you find out the dude is kind of disgusting, he don't do certain things. And when you find that first big big ass argument to me, you find out if she gonna key your car. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If she gonna go through your phone, see how crazy she is, if he gonna slap you or do something crazy to you. So to me, sometimes that's how I kind of, when I'm looking at a relationship, I want to go through the motions. I'm not saying that I want all good shit, but I know good 
for, for me, if you love somebody, you got to go through hardship to understand love. Because they go, they like the yin and the yang to me. I mean, I think the way to just put it in a nutshell is you don't know what you have until it's tested. You know what That's I mean? That's a great way. This is Moses, man. Let me just interrupt. I don't know what camera looking at. This is Moses, man. His mother named him Moses because he just got the prophetic word, baby. But go ahead. No, but seriously, it's like in a nutshell, you don't know what you have until it's tested. You know what I'm saying? 100%. A woman just like a male friendship, right? You don't know if that's truly a boy until you need him. You get where I'm Definitely. coming from? And it's the same thing that goes on in the streets. Like a lot of these dudes running around with these dudes, they getting money with these dudes and they thinking that these dudes is loyal. But then something happens, dude is in the interrogation room. Sorry, you understand bro. why? And now, and now you come in to find out that, your books. bruh, Niggas you can't hold pressure. He can't, can't hold, pressure. Yeah. he can't hold pressure. He can't hold water. Because the truth is, you didn't really know that, man, because y'all situation never been tested before. And it's the same thing with a woman, you know, and I'm a, I'm a strong believer in this because it's kind of tough to be a man. And the reason I say that is you kind of get into a situation with a woman knowing that, yo, in the back of your mind, if I fall off, I have a limited time to get back on my feet before this woman starts resenting me and eventually <laughs> leaves me. You know, some women it'll take a year, some women it'll take five years, some women it'll take 10 years. And then you, and then you have the small percentage out there that that I believe, that will stick with you through it all. You understand what I mean? Let me tell you something, the illest thing, I'll never forget this, B. Um, it's a couple of years ago, uh, my step pops, you know, he had a bunch of different cancers for being in, um, in the World Trade Center when it uh, working down there, right? So throughout the years, he had different types of cancer. Thank God he's good. But the craziest part is I remember going to a doctor visit with him one time, and um, the doctor had asked him about my mom. He said, how's your wife? And he said, oh, my wife is good. And the doctor's like, whew, I'm glad to hear that. And he was like, why you made that reaction? And he said, because a lot of times when people are terminal or in that type of stage, people leave. Them. You know what I'm saying? And it was funny. I'll never, never forget I had this girl, this girl I knew from work. Her name was Monique, I think. God bless her soul. And I went to a wedding, and it was one of the best weddings I ever went to. Like, I ain't know nobody, but it was just, like, fun. And I remember she had left the job because she had, like, like, breast cancer, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw her like a year later in the train station. I was taking the train at the time. And, and I, saw, I was like, yo, Mo, what's up? And she was like, what's up, man? She kind of had like a little attitude. I was like, you all right, man? How you feeling? I said, yo, what's up with your husband? Man, that was the best one I ever went to. He said, that nigga left me when the first breast fell off. So I was like, what? So to me, it baffled me because both of them were gone at this time. That's what she meant. And then I was like, yo, I was madly in love. So what you said, when the relationship is tested, People, I, I couldn't imagine somebody leaving you because you don't have. <laughs> my step pops couldn't work for a long time for a minute after that. And my mom's basically, who didn't work, had to go to work to kind of make things even out. And so for, in my household, that's why I always looked at how a woman's supposed to be. And my, my step pops was, you know, the breadwinner. He, was, he, he took care of the bills. He took, but my mother had to step her game up. You know what I mean? And I don't see a lot of women who would step their game up nowadays for that type of perk for, for a man that's going to do that. So, you know what I mean? It, it's kind of crazy because I wonder if homegirl who said that, if her dude fell off who was taking care of her all that time, would she still be there? But see, but this, this is the thing. I mean, I think these days we're playing a very dangerous game, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying that is if we keep going in the direction that we're going, I think that within the next 30 years, love won't even exist no more. And the reason I'm saying... And the, Check, listen to what I'm saying. Love, Steve, is, you say love, love, and need enough. love has become so transactional, right? It's simply, look, I love you if you give me this, if you do this, if you do that, right? Think about when, yo, bro, think about when we was um when we were growing up, right? And you know how like you walk into the room and it's like, yo, that's gonna be my wifey. Right? Mm. Ain't no more of that, right? Or how a woman will walk into a room and it'll be like, yo. It's just something about this dude. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm just, it's the way he move. I'm, Cause she's just caught up in his essence. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But nowadays it's all about where he drives, what he wears, you know, that's the attraction. You know what I mean? And the truth is a lot of people these days aren't even together because they're compatible. They're together because they were attracted to each other. And that's why it, do and that's why it doesn't work. But what I'm saying with this whole love might become extinct 
is that love has become so transactional, bro. Love has become about everything other than nurturing that person, taking care of that person, holding that well, person down. I would down. agree with you in the transactional, but I think I, I think about it in a different sense. Um, it's no accountability to each other no more. And I think money is, is transactional. Money changed the, the playing field of love to me. And what I mean by that, when you went back into the 80s and the 70s and even the 60s, which I wasn't born, but the 70s and 80s I was here, you know, a man and a woman had to depend on each other. Most of the time a man would work and mm -hmm. a woman had to depend on that paycheck so she couldn't leave because she didn't really have her own cash, mm -hmm. though, right? And he wouldn't leave simply because he didn't know how to wash his clothes. He didn't know how to, where he was going to get his next meal from. And they had to stay together. And I think even though it's dope that women are making the same amount of money men are making, and I think they should, when that transition happened, it changes the playing field. It changed the balance, right? Mm -hmm. It changed the balance of things. And now a woman's like, I got my own. I don't need no nigga. You know what I'm saying? And the dude is like, now nah, he's been on his own. Take it from me. I've been on my own for a long time, living my own self. I cook clean and everything. I don't need no woman to do that. Mm -hmm. So we don't need each other anymore in those sense, like with those things, that, those little things that keep us together. It's like we don't need each other anymore. And we got to figure out things that keep us together. We have to do more building with each other to figure out what we can do with each other to keep us together. Because kids ain't enough. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true, man. You don't think because so? no, because I think people were together, yes, because they needed each other, but it wasn't. It wasn't a need. But of, it made you work it out. Though. No, but listen to what I'm saying. I don't think it was that type of need. Mm. I, think, I think people grew attached to each other. I think the love was genuine. You understand where I'm coming from? I, I where, agree. Where, where I'm going to rock out with this person, right? Even if this person goes through tough times or whatever, I'm going to rock out. But these <laughs> days, you know, I think it's also the fact that it's an overwhelming amount of choices, right? Because a woman could be in a relationship and the truth is her man could be down and all she got to do is go on social media and there's 80 dudes in her DM. Like, mom, let me fly you out. Yeah, but, the, but I, I still don't think, I still, I think we said kind of saying the same thing, but there is a level of attachment. So when you, it's like anything. If you, I don't care if you're with your boy. If you're spending mad time and y'all hustling and y'all doing, y'all camaraderie build something. Everybody's standing on their own, so you don't have the camaraderie anymore. I feel like in relationship, you got to put something there to have a camaraderie so you can build off of something. And then when you're creating something, it's like anything you build. You build something, you love it because you you put it together with but that, somebody. That's not necessarily. You don't think so? That's not necessarily true. Well, that's the type of love I'm looking because, for. Anybody because anybody want to build with me, let me know. Because because <laughs> yo, because at the end, you know I mean, mean? Beca because at the end of the day, I mean, look, there there were relationships back then. There were situations where both were independently wealthy, you understand? I just think that, look, these days, women want men to be traditional while they become less and less traditional. You understand? I 100% agree with that. It's something like I always say, at the end of the day, I pull out chairs and I open doors, not because you're a woman, but because I think that that's what makes me a man. You understand what woman I'm saying? Woman told me that was sexist for me to open her door. Yeah, door. I mean, I it, it door, gets, she was like, I don't need no man to open my door for me. I was like, what? But it gets, it gets, okay, cool. Like, it gets, it, 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 it's it gets, crazy. Bro, it gets, it gets confusing these it's days. Crazy. But, but at the end of the day, it's like, look, whether you want it or not, I'm going to do what I'm going to do because yeah, I'm, do, yeah. I'm doing it for me. You understand where I'm not doing it because you're a woman. I'm doing it because that's what makes me a man at the end of the day. That's how I see things. You understand? But everyone also isn't deserving of that side of me. So everybody does not get that side of me. So wait a minute. So I saw this thing today again on social media, which was kind of crazy. Homeboy was talking about uh, sex. He was saying, um, I don't know what it's called. It's a guy terminology for when you nut and you don't want the chick no more. What's that called? Um, um, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna find it right now. It's uh, a <coughs> post-nut clarity. Post-nut clarity. Now, do you think post nut clarity is true? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Hell yeah because, because I've experienced, me, listen, I, I've experienced that in my- Post nut clarity. Look, Monty's like, what the hell? I, yeah, post -nut you, I'm going to tell you what post nut clarity is, Monty. So post nut clarity is basically you in your crib, right? 11 o'clock, midnight, you horny or whatever. So you call Shorty up. Let's say you in Brooklyn and Shorty, she live in the Bronx. And she like, yo, come through. And you like, yeah, ma, I'm going to come through. I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to spend the night, blah, 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 this, this, this. You jump in your whip. 
You take the troop all the way to the Bronx. You get there like 1.30. You, wait, hold I'm on. not going to the Bronx. You, you, oh if you go to, something wrong with you, nigga. nigga. Oh, Lord. That's you what, get there. You get, monkey pox live. Yo, you get, the, the Bronx, <laughs> you get there like 1, 1.30 <laughs> in the morning, right? Crazy. You get there why like 1, 1.30 in the morning. Wait a minute. Why you have to pick the Because it's far out. Because it's far out. And and when the little head is controlling the big head, that's the stupidness you do, right? So then it's now. I love the Bronx. I'm just. No, I'm you just, don't. I'm only now, serious. Now was one th- I used to live on Masuda Parkway back in the day. That was nice, man. Now it was 1 30 in the morning. You smash, right? And you done told Shorty you was gonna spend the night. After you smash and you nut, all of a sudden your brain come back and you like, what am I doing in now the Bronx, go to the Bronx for that. at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning? Now, it ain't, and it ain't even about the car, bro. It's just that Yo, I've nutted and, and it's, like, it's like it's like you nut. it's like you liked her and the second you nut, you want to be as far away from her as possible. No, I, and you know what? I think I think that's the true test of whether you're interested in a woman or it's been not. Worse for me because if if you not before I and, nut, and she I'm could still of, stay after, then you like her, bro. Before I, <laughs> but before I nut, I'm thinking about how to get out when I nut. Like, okay, I got Yo, listen, <laughs> and, and and dudes, like, dudes to call their man or send a text, like, yo, hit me in 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Like, and say, phone ring, what? Who got shot? <laughs> like, yo, yo, I'm coming right now. Like, yo, one time, I, this is not post uh, nut clarity, but one time, right, I had this chick. Story time. Huh? Story time. Yeah, 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 story time. <laughs> yo, one time I had this chick in my crib, son. Oh, my God. And I took down the drawers and the, the, the crotch was like, Oof. I said, oh, Jesus Christ, right? So I, have, I, I act like I fell asleep because I didn't know how to tell her. See style <laughs> stories. Yo, I didn't know how to tell her. Her, her, her box was like, woof, right? So I fell asleep. So I'm sleeping. You and left I'm, her in the bed with you? Bro, I was trying to figure out. Listen, I, I came up with a plan. Check out the plan. So I fell asleep. I'm sleeping in the bed. I'm snoring, right? I'm, I'm acting like I'm sleeping like, <laughs> So I start going, how you doing, man? Everything's okay? And she's like, what? Why? So I go, I, so, so she, I can see, I can feel her like looking at me like, what the hell is he doing? I go, yeah, I gotta get out of here. I can't take it no more. And then I go, right? I start making all these voices, right? And she, she shorty shakes me, go, yo, you okay? You okay? I'm like, what happened? I said, she said, you was talking, like, doing these weird... I said, oh, yeah, nah, sometimes I just be talking in my sleep. <laughs> I, be, I, be, I, be do, I be doing weird voices in my sleep, but nah, it's cool, like, we good, right? So she got the TV on, so I be like, nah, this, just chill. I'm, you know, I'm just tired. I'll take you home in the morning. I'm like... <clears throat> and I start going again, I'm like... I can't take it no more. I gotta go. I, no, don't do that. Don't touch me like that. Please, don't do Please. Oh, my God. Stop it. You see, so she wakes me up again. Yo, yo, get up, get up, get up. So this is like 10 minutes of this shit going on, right? He's like, yo, I, I think I'm going to call a cab because I'm just going to go. I said, why are you going home? She's like, yo, because I don't know what's going on, but you scare me. I said, yo, baby, I just talk in my sleep. It's something that I do. So she got up and she left. But the crazy part is, I was at this barbecue, hoop, a hood barbecue I went through. Well, I seen Shorty, it's like 20, 25 years ago. I seen it, and all I can think about is stick crotch, B. Like, it was the craziest thing in the world. But I say all that to say, when you guys think box, do anything to get it away. That's it. Thank On that you. note, you know what we're going to do? We're going to break off to a little skit, another C-style story. Y'all go check this out. We'll be oh, right back. Man. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, C-Styles. quite a ladies man back in my day so I'm gonna tell y'all some shit matter of fact speaking about some shit check this story out so I was dating this fly Spanish mommy back in my day and you know we just finished doing the do and she looked at me after we were finished and said do you want to try something different and I said yeah so she told me go wash your ass so I went to the bathroom took a bird bath you know what I'm saying? I got some soap and water, went to the sink, and I washed my ass. So I got one of my mama brand new towels, and I dried my butt real good because I want to make sure that it was dry. I didn't want to go in there with no wet ass. You know what I'm saying? So I went back in the room, and she said, you ready? And I looked at her and told her, I'm ready. I got on the bed. 
I kind of kneeled up on the bed like a doggy style position. I know, don't tell me about it. She asked me what I was doing. I said, how else are you going to get to my butt? I don't know. She said, get on your back. So I laid back. She went down on me, gave me some head, and then got to my balls and went down to my ass. And when she got there, it felt so good, I started screaming. And I didn't want to sound like a little biatch because I'm already in a biatch position. I grabbed the towel and I put it in my mouth to cover my screams. Then I realized to myself, isn't this the same towel I just dried my own ass with? We go hard. I, well, I hope y'all enjoyed that, man. That's, <laughs> that's a true story, by the way. I, I'm sorry to say, but you know. About, yeah. My kink level was high. You and, you, and, you, and, you and your groceries, bro. <laughs> my kink level was high. But <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, on a serious note, I don't know how you go from a serious note to that, man. I was watching the, uh, I was watching the news this week, and I seen something sad. I just want to talk to the kids, man. It's just crazy. I seen the kids harassing some old people. They wasn't harassing. They was beating down the old people in the Bronx, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, shout, and shout out to my to my dude, my son, my man, song, for yeah, going definitely. out there and really addressing that situation. Like, I mean, this this thing is getting out of hand. Like, and and, and what I mean by it's that no respect. is we, when. When, I don't even understand. We never did that. Like when when the elders ain't safe and the and the babies ain't safe, it's like, bro, like, yeah. I mean, it's it's really a problem. You understand? But like I always say, there's no such thing as bad children. Only bad parenting. You get where I'm coming from. So, but is there any parents? I don't even understand. Like I don't even I don't understand how we get to that level though. I don't understand what what you get out of beating an older person, even if they talking crap. Like I can't like. I'm, move, I'm so far from moving that. I'm like, all right, cool. Leave that little lady. Yeah, but I, doing over there. I see somebody snuff an old man and go in his pocket. Like, but, but I think, but I think that's a consequence of insecurity, not being comfortable in your own skin. Like, like a lot of these kids, man, they, they, they want to be looked at in a certain light so bad that it's like they'll do anything just to get it's that. It's never that much, but you can't, you can't put your hand on old people. You can't put your hand on, you know. You don't think about your mother. You don't think about your grandmother. You don't think about whoever you respect that's that age. Why would you even fathom because, doing something because like I, that? I'm, because I'm going to tell you. Beating up a, I see some dude snuff an old lady, stab her. Like, like what we doing out here? Like, yeah, because, because at the end of the day, they value the attention. They value the reputation. They value being able to say I'm a badass or people saying they're a badass. But how you a more badass... But that's not person. being a badass. That's I don't that's, understand how that's, you're a badass. That's the you thing. Can't, that, that's it's not, corny. Like you're a coward. Like you're basically a coward, bro. You don't get no wins for that. You don't get no props for that. You don't like, get you don't get absolutely no wins for that. Like I just never understood that. You know what I mean? Because that's the same thing with me. Like you know, like like with the whole people saying things on social media, like that. That's never bothered me, and I've never paid attention to it. You know why? Because obviously you're not a threat. <laughs> you you get where I'm coming from? Like, if somebody is going to come at you on social media, obviously, bro, you're, you're not a threat. Because if you were sick, because I know me, if I'm going to do something to you, bro, ain't nobody going to know. Like, I'm going to just pop up where I'm going to pop up and do what I'm going to do. You get where I'm coming from? But, but <laughs> I hear you, but we ain't even getting to that point yet. These niggas is beating old people. And I agree with but, everything you're saying. It's just like, how do you find pleasure in that? How do you find respect in that? How do you find, like, who does that? I've never seen me growing up. I, ne I remember beating up a kid one time and his moms came on the scene and, you know, we start, you know, somebody start cursing at the mother and everybody like, yo, chill, son, you yeah, kid. Yeah, like, what you nah, doing? Nah, what you doing? You know what I mean? You pulled your, you pulled your homie back and you like, all right, we'll catch you later. It ain't like that no more. You know what I'm saying? A nigga run down, I seen a nigga run down to the kid and pop at him and his kid, like, we don't got no morals no more. We don't got no, no, no ethics no more. No, no nothing. Like, you can't catch a nigga sleeping somewhere else. Like, Catch him slipping in some 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 other time. Like I don't, I really don't get it. Like, is this different? I mean, but it's, look, everybody has to be accountable. You understand what I'm saying? These these older dudes, <laughs> you got dudes in their forties calling dudes in their mid twenties big homie, right? The idolization of money, right? These kids start getting some bread all of a sudden, and, and I think I think that that's what began. That's what started the breakdown of the streets. You know what I mean? Like the streets used to be this fraternity, bro, that if you lived by certain principles, if you lived by a certain code, 
you had entry into, right? But nothing other than living by those principles and codes could get you entry into that. So if you were cornball and you come on the block with a Benz, yeah, we gonna throw bottles at that. Fuck out of here. Like you corny, you understand? And that's not gonna change your corniness. But these days- The corny niggas messed everything up, B. I just think, like I said- Is it? No, but, but see, but the corny niggas can't mess things up until the- Real niggas started respecting the corny niggas. So real problem. niggas got to be accountable too. Because everybody disrespect the paper. They don't respect nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's the problem. You know, niggas respect money. They don't, they don't respect manhood. They don't respect nothing else. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't respect the niggas that's out there really putting in the work, putting in the grind. They don't respect hard work. They don't respect none of that. So, but this, but this, but, but what you got to understand is it's, it's not just, it's not just niggas. It's, it's society, it's our women, right? Like, that's what everybody respects, so that's what everybody gravitates. That's who people put up on a pedestal, and it's so crazy because, you know, rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. I always used to hear Kevin Samuels talk about um, a high-value man, right? Mm -hmm. But a high-value man isn't a high-quality man, you know what I mean? Because a dude can make all the money in the world. That doesn't mean he's not a piece of shit as a person. <laughs> you understand? What? We, once again, we value the bread before yeah, we value like, anything else. Like, like, like at the end of the day, you know, the true measure of a man's worth is his character. Because, 100%. because, because the truth is, a broke person, a good person with nothing will always be willing to do more for you than a fucked up person with everything. Like, that's the reality of the situation. Message! <laughs> Message! Listen, man. This is Message Mo. You know what I mean? Uh, damn, I went from Moses to Message Mo. Message like, Mo. God damn. You know what I'm saying? All in one episode. You know what I mean? But they go, they gonna keep coming though. And Message Mo, this this is what he do for a living. Um, I saw something else funny that I, I just had to talk about, which I thought was some cornball shit. Really, to be honest with you, I saw the game uh, playing this thing with the Balenciaga. He had like for a person to get something, they had to go in the garbage and eat some out of the garbage. Or I saw Shorty drink some. I thought both of them was cornballs for that. Like, I don't understand what people would do anything for money now. That, that shit just bothered me, man. You? Like, people are really selling their soul for bread, B. Like, and I don't know how game would even play that game with a chick, like, with anybody. Like, you know what I mean? It ain't that deep. You can find another game to play, B. You like, to go in the garbage to belittle somebody, to go take something out of the garbage so they can get a pair of shoes. That, that shit ain't cool. You know? I mean, I mean listen, on, on one hand, I see it like this, like nobody forced her something that she chose to do. But on the other hand, like when I watched it, what it reminded me of was seeing them old black and white pictures, you know, these plantation owners using four or five year old black kids as footstools, right? It's like, because every time I saw that, I, I would just think to myself, I have no desire to have that type of authority over, over someone, you know what I mean? So like the game, all right, yeah, you wealthy, you got this bread or whatever. And now you're using that wealth to humiliate people. You and I, cool. and, I, and I get I get I get you're creating content. I get it's clickbait. I get it's interesting. I get we're giving you exactly what it is that the results that you were looking for because we're talking about it. And that's and that's why <coughs> we did it. But like at the end of the day, to me, man, that's that's just some that shit is some bozo shit, bro. Like seriously, yeah, I ain't like that shit. That shit was crazy to me. <clears throat> you know, I saw sure I saw a video a video too talking about shit like that. I seen. Kind of graphic. I seen some girl getting shit on, going to um Dubai. Or oh something yeah, like I seen. That. I seen that. <laughs> yeah, that shit Yo. was crazy. Like, for, oh for, man. For a couple hundred thousand and is it worth? And is it worth it? No. No, B. For a hundred thousand, like they she was, she was, like, she was gonna do shit in her mouth, not on her face, in her mouth. It was crazy, B. <laughs> Excuse yeah, me. But but listen, you know, I mean, I see that it. That was crazy. I see it this way. I, I don't know what, and I don't know where that nigga shit came from because she got that to was be the most soulless. shit I ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, Yo, nah. This that nigga dude, must have been shit in like ten days. Yo, bro, nigga. nah. Like, that dude went I, to the all you eat can eat buffet, bro, and went I in. I ain't never seen no shit like that. But I ain't never took a shit like that <laughs> in my life. My shittiest of shits ain't never been like. Son, that shit was a mountain. Yo, of that shit. Sh that it, shit was shit. Calm. You can't forget. Yo, what you gonna buy? Like even if you bought. With Hermes, like, what? Ain't what nothing you gonna buy that's gonna wash what, that shit away. Wash bro. that stench away, my Yo, nigga. that stain is on your soul. When that bag gets that old, stain is on your like, soul, what do you bro. Wanna do? Like, you just sold your soul to the. You might as well to sell your soul to the devil, be at that point, be. That that was crazy to me. Uh, uh, uh. But why, yo, that was crazy, insane. I watched. I'm like, yo, 
what people doing for bread, B? But this is what I'm saying. But then at the end of the day, like, your soul ain't worth shit, but then you expect a man to value you. That, I mean, it can't be both. You got to pick a side. Either you ain't shit or you are shit. It's one or the other. It can't be both. You she understand it? Dudes, dudes, dudes can't be, dudes can't be <laughs> shitting, in, shit, dudes can't be shitting, know. dudes can't be shitting in your mouth today and then tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? You want to be playing hot? Like, nah, that's. So we, me and her had to shoot five. If she was my, my show that I found that video. <laughs> Y'all had to shoot five. We're going to have to shoot five. Bro. Oh, we nigga, I'm out of here. Shoot five. I'm shooting five. She made me kiss her. I'm shooting five. Bitch. <laughs> Yo. and, unless you're shorty and she find out. And you see the video pop up and surface. Oh my god! And you've been kissing her for six months. Oh my we god! We five, my nigga. Oh my god! We shoot five, b. I'm slapping shit. <laughs> Yo, you, you, you literally <laughs> slapping the shit out of her. We shoot five, my nigga. Could you imagine? And she move, move, kissing you, nigga. Oh, Are you man. serious? Oh man. That's crazy, son. And niggas got niggas out here playing with their butthole, all that. Let me stop. We can't talk Yo, about the, we can't on. talk about the untouchables. Let me this chill. guy right chill. here. I'm a chill. You going left? I'm just saying because I people doing shit for uh, money. It just it just bothering me. You man. going left? I don't need, I don't even want to hear that word. What? The word you said, bro. What, what the said? word that relates to the untouchables. Oh, bro. man, we can't touch the untouchables. <laughs> yeah. We got a couple of surprises that's gonna happen. Some things is gonna make you laugh. Some things are gonna make you cry. Um, any niggas got beef with each other? Let us know. We can solve it. <laughs> Please, <laughs> we gonna we got a unique way of showing you that, and we gonna take you to this clip. Watch this. Welcome today to Brooklyn Boys oh, Radio. Oh, oh, oh. Slap boxing. Nice. USA. Fight. Round one. Yo, we're going to see y'all each and every week. From now on, we're going to be consistent and show y'all love. And I hope y'all to show us the love back. All right, man. We appreciate y'all tuning in to Brooklyn Boys Radio. Yeah. This is your boy, Mo. Brooklyn's best. This is C Styles, man. We're going to see y'all each and every week with us, man. We're going to be consistent with you, so you be consistent with us. That's right, man. Tune in. Appreciate y'all. Brooklyn, out. <laughs>